those students? Can you go in your business books? In three books, open them up to page 11 and have a go at answering what those objectives might be. So it says might be appropriate in the situations below. You've got six situations there. It may be that more than one objective is appropriate. Might be that you think none of the objectives are appropriate, but have a little look at those different situations. Um, you can do it in pencil first, so just cross out if there's enough space in your book to do this. Um, I'm going to give you about two or three minutes to do that. And then we'll see what you've came up with. Okay, you've had a little bit of time to think about the answers to those questions. Um, the other little starter that you could have looked at there as well was what factors increased demand for a good or service. Um, we'll go through both of those in a second. Um, thinking about the factors that affect demand, lower price complements, higher priced substitutes, the lower market price from a shift outwards in supply, advertising, lower income tax or higher incomes for normal goods. So goods where they are responsive or unresponsive to changes in income and a rising population. OK, so hello students. Welcome to the lesson. Um, you may remind me that I said I was not going to be off this year. Well, I'm not off. Um, I'm in the building. I'm just not able to, to lead the lesson. So you have virtual Aaron this afternoon. Um, we're going to quickly go through a little recap of the last lesson, um, which is business objectives. I'm going to give you a few reminders for things that you should be doing um, during the week, um, which we really need to get into the habit of doing because we didn't do them to the right time in the first week. Um, we're then going to look a little bit at a topic called the principal agent problem. And then we're also going to look at business growth in terms of integration um, and 
organic and inorganic growth. Um, if you just want to have a look at the board there, so depending on what answers you came up with, there was a few different possible solutions. Um, being able to take over the rival um, could be profit max because if you've got over 70% of the market share, you're effectively now a monopoly. Um, and you'd be able to put your prices up and make the greatest profit possible. Um, government coming under pressure from the media about high energy prices, well, this would be um, something that would drive more ethical behaviour. So you could say it would be satisfying. So businesses reducing their profits um, to pass some of those cost savings on to customers. Um, but it could also be a switch to a welfare maximisation or an allocative efficiency uh, objective for the business. Um, if you can just note these down in your books, remember it's page 11. So just cross out if you've got any incorrect answers for this or add down the answers that um, we're going through here. So annual general meeting, you've decided you're going to increase your own pay by 50%, but not enough shareholders have turned up to vote that down. So it's either that you are going along a revenue max strategy to gain that pay in the first place, but it could also just be satisfying in terms of just making small profits. So you're not maximising your profits, you're making just enough to stay in business, but the small profits is satisfying. Um, managing director looking for a new job, well, any one of those policies would make your CV look better. You might want your CV to look better from selling a lot and having great market share. You may want your CV to look better from revenue maximisation, linked into your share price. But you might also want profit maximisation because that would give a significant dividend to your shareholders. Um, recession would be survival and new competitor entering the market depends if you're going to be aggressive or shrink your business so it could be a sales max if you were going to be an aggressive response but it could also be survival and um, if you're just going to shrink your business and um, so that is a little quick recap um, of the initial activity um, that i just shared with you there um, let's have a quick look at um, the PowerPoint for this lesson. So, um, first little section of the lesson, um, we're going to discuss the extent to which profit maximisation is the main objective of all businesses. That was our question from the first lesson. Um, we are going to describe what is meant by the principal agent problem. Um, we will potentially solve that problem and then we'll look at how businesses grow and the reasons for their growth. And just a reminder that the three things we need to start getting into the habit of doing between lessons. The first activity is going to be read up. That's your reading activity. And if you haven't submitted that, um, you need to take a photo of that very quickly and submit that to me. And the write up is the essay practice. So this was the thing that we did um, in the booklet. And you will do that in your purple book from this week going forwards. You should all have a purple book on your tables, put your name on it. This is your homework book. It will come back with you next week. Um, and the warm up part is reading ahead in the lesson. So you've got all of the booklets you need. You should be reading ahead. Today's lesson was about business growth. You should have had a little look at that before the lesson. Um, and across the week, there's two knowledge checks to check what you've done in the week to make sure that you're improving our knowledge, but also recapping what we have done in the past. A little reminder, so another thing that you need to submit on to the team site is those questions around Vespa, and this will form a part of your first one-to-one -one with me. Um, and that is your week for C block. So you should have your lesson on Wednesday morning and afternoon. You should have done the first knowledge check and the reading task by the weekend. By the end of the weekend, knowledge check two and your essay, and then you warm up for the following lesson on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday by reading ahead in the book. And that should give you your five hours of practice. Um, so this little section is going to be around um, looking at this exam question. So this is the one that we looked at last week. Discuss the extent to which profit maximisation is the main objective of all businesses. Um, and we said that it would be a definition. 
between SEO starts off with a definition and an application to a specific type of business. We said that the two sides were why the business would want profit maximization. And we said this was more a long term or a time strategy and why they might not, a situation in which they might not in the short term. And if it was an SA question, we'd need an evaluative conclusion around the judgment. So we noted that the word all would give us um, a good key judgment to make there um, around that. So I'm going to give you a little task now. Um, it's going to hopefully just take about um, five minutes or so to write up. Um, and what I would like you to do is to plan out this question. So get your notebooks, wherever you're going to write this up. Um, if you want to, you could write this in the back of your purple book. In fact, no, that's the better idea. So go to the very back page of your purple book. And in the back page, um, you're going to just briefly do two paragraphs to answer this question. And um, the way this will be structured is start off with that sentence. So it is rational for businesses to profit maximize in the long term because you need to give a reason why the profits are needed for a business. Apply this to an example which businesses need profits. Just choose a business, any business, and explain the specific benefit of those profits to the owners or the shareholders. So we're talking about private sector businesses here. Um, opposite side, however, in the short term, it might be more appropriate to choose an objective. You could go for um, sales maximization, revenue maximization, survival, satisfying welfare. It's up to you. But again, apply that to the business that you've looked at. So give examples, apply it to context, explain the benefits of adopting this. And the last part there is a challenge if you're a fast writer. So if you're going to write fast and you're going to get through this quite quickly, um, you could write up a conclusion. So the extent to which they can depends upon, and I'm suggesting their market share. So see if you could have a conclusion, something around market share that would tell you that the business is more or less able to profit maximize. Okay, um, so like I said, I'm going to give you about five minutes initially to write this up. Try and at least get the paragraph four quite detailed. If you get time, do the paragraph against. Should have time to do that. Um, if you do write quickly, then have a little go at the conclusion. Um, and I'll show you a model and sound about five minutes time. Okay, students, remember, you've got case four. If you've done that, case against why there'll be another objective, think of the situation applied to the business. If you are a fast writer and you've done both of those things, 
remember to have a go at a conclusion. The extent to which the business can profit maximise depends upon market share because finish that paragraph. OK, that's time up. Um, let's have a look at an example answer. So put your hands down for a second. Um, but once we've gone through this, then make amendments to your booklet. Um, there should be a purple pen on every desk for you to use to do this. If you've used it, if you've used the purple pen, Use a different colour pen to make your improvements. So just so it's obvious where you made an improvement. And um, don't try and copy this all out. The example answer, just make some notes. So it could be the things that I put in bold, but it could also just be a few little notes around the outside of your answer to improve it. Um, and I will save the the second answer um, onto the team site. Um, so, in the long term, profit maximisation is the rational behaviour of all firms. Even if they are unable to, they will still be willing. So, here's a key start part. Profits will allow a business to gain reward for their investment. So, specifically linking back to their remuneration in the form of dividends. So, key word there, dividends, they come from profits. And um, Historically, oil companies applying it to the market paid large dividends from large profits. If profits are retained, then key term retained, it allows investment, key term, um, which can allow a business to grow further. Any business that continually makes a loss will go out of business. So again, loss out of business. Just make some notes if you need to improve on your essay. Um, however, in the short term, another objective may be appropriate. In times of recession, such as the Great Recession of 2008, highlighted key application there, banks application to the market, had to focus on survival, specific key term, and reduce the scale of their operation. Again, key term, scale of operation. Rates were lowered to maintain customers and staff were laid off. So again, um, key term there. Um, this allowed them to at least cover their costs and continue to operate until the economy picked up. So if you have missed some key parts there, then think about how you could add to those. Um, I'm going to give you an even better version of the answer. So this is kind of a B version of the answer. I'm going to give you an A grade. I'm not going to put the A grade on here for long, but it will be saved into the team site for this topic. So you'll be able to see um, that um, a bit later. So the better A grade answer, so key definition. And the reason this is A grade, some of these topics we haven't done yet. We haven't done some of the definitions. So I'm giving you something you haven't seen yet. And profit maximisation is when a firm maximises revenue in relation to minimising its costs. All technology firms need this to be their main objective, as in the long run, if total cost is greater than total revenue, they will make a loss leading to bankruptcy. Better key to more specific definition, total cost greater than total revenue, more specific definition, maximises revenue, minimising costs. However, most technology firms, such as Facebook, um, have very little revenue initially as the business grows and they try to gain advertising revenues. So really specific context there in terms of the business reason for growing. Um, costs are higher in the short term as they haven't gained economies of scale. Key term, topic we haven't covered yet. 
survival may be more appropriate where the business makes normal profit, costs equal in revenue, or average cost equal in revenue, trying to stay in the market. So again, more specific key terms, more detailed context. And the extent to which technology firms can profit maximize depends upon their market share. If they can gain a market share greater than 25%, specific definition, and they will have more potential to increase prices and increase revenue in relation to costs. So again, really specific, basically saying if you're a big firm, you can profit maximize. It's going to be harder if you're a small firm competing in your market. And um, so that was just a little application of the question that we looked at last week and just getting that structure of essays to become um, second nature to us. Um, anyone see a familiar face? Have a little look. It's not me. It's Freddie. Have a look down the front there. Freddie Keynes. Do you know why Freddie Keynes is doing the Great North Run? Because what Freddie Keynes loves is the long run. Ha ha ha! It's an economic joke. And um, so two little situations here, and um, just for you to think about for a minute. And um, Brexit vote happens, county values 30%, which equals a 30% increase in import costs. Why in the short term would a business not want to increase their prices, even if their costs have gone up? Second situation, a competitor enters your market and begins a price war. Why in the short term would you not want to put your prices down? So both of these, Freddie Keynes loves the long run, but we're just looking at this from the short run. Why would you not want to increase your prices when your costs have gone up? And why might you not want to reduce your prices when competitors enter your market? And you can use your whiteboard just to think of some ideas. I'll give you a minute to think about that, and then we'll come up with some ideas together. So thinking about what the possible answers could be. Um, in the short run, um, when your costs go up, what you might not want to do is to put your prices up. So they stay the same for a number of reasons. And um, one of those could be is that you don't want your to lose customers. 
your customers are price sensitive. So if the PD is greater than, sorry, less than or equal to minus one, um, then you potentially are going to have customers quite responsive to price changes. So you might just accept lower profits in the short term. Um, and that could be because your market is very um, competitive. Um, in terms of your not entering a price wall, so your competitor puts their price down and you keep your price the same, it could be that you're an inelastic market. So the PD is minus 0.5 or something like that, but it's inelastic and the consumers are responsive. And um, it could also be that you don't want customers to think that your quality is falling. So maybe that there is part of your price which infers quality and you don't want them to think that you have a low quality good or service. And um, it could also be that you have a lot of profits retained and you don't need to enter into a price war. So different reasons looking at things from the short term perspective rather than a long term perspective. Um, Looking back at the um, presentation then, um, what I'd like you to go to is if you go back to your booklet um, and you're going to go to page 12. So just the next page along, um, page 12, and at the top it says, what is the principal agent problem? And um, what you have um, is some examples um, of the principal agent problem. But just before we look at those, just pause for a second. Um, I just want you in your own heads, think about answers to these questions. So if you have paid someone for something, a good or a service, and felt that you were ripped off, or that someone overcharged you for it. Um, what was it and how did it happen? Um, did you get any compensation? Did you get your money back? And why do you think it happened? So just in your own heads, reflect on your own lives, on your own experiences of purchasing goods or services. Um, if I paid someone for something, and you thought you were ripped off or overcharged, what was it? How did it happen? And were you able to get some kind of compensation on your money back? And why do you think that happened? What were the incentives that were going on that led to that? Just think about that for 30 seconds. So you might have got an example of a product that you bought on the internet that had a good review, turned out it wasn't very good and you ended up overpaying for it. It might have been a concert ticket that you bought and the concert wasn't as good as you thought it was going to be. Um, it could be that you went to the dentist and the dentist told you that you needed a filling and you didn't and you ended up paying for a filling. Um, so lots of different examples there. What I'd like you to do now, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to read through and just have a read of that section on page 12. So what would you say once you've read through it is the definition for the principal agent problem? And um, think about the negatives of the problem. And when you look through the examples there, um, have a think about who the principal and who the agent is in each of those examples. So have a little read through definition for the principal agent problem, explain the negatives of the problem, and then you've got two different examples. Who are the principal? Who are the agent in those problems? And um, I'll give you about seven or eight minutes for this, and then we'll go through some potential answers. <laughs> 